Good morning, everybody. Um, today is the March is March fifteenth, and this is the elementary school building committee meeting. And seeing we have a quorum, although we're we're missing several people, so when they arrive, I will uh, note let everyone know that they are here too. I'm going to call the meeting to order at eight thirty five. And my first task, as people know, is to make sure everyone can hear and be heard. Okay, so Angelica won't be joining us. She's out of the country. Um, I'm going to uh, call on names as I see them on the screen. Just let us know if you can hear us and we can hear you. Doug? I'm here. Yes, thank you. Jennifer? I'm here. Good morning. Good morning, Jonathan? Good morning. Paul? Present. Rupert? Yes, loud and clear. And Simone? Yes. So right now we're missing Tammy, Allison, and Alicia. Um, oh, so Alicia just texted me that she's not going to be able to join either. So uh, two people are confirmed not joining us. So I am... And Tammy has, hi, Tammy. Can you just let us know if you can hear us and we can hear you? Tammy, can you say hi just so we can know that you can we can hear you? You're on mute. I think she's trying to figure it out. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll wait for her to let us. She, you can just let us know, Tammy, if you can hear us. You're up. Okay, so Margaret, I'm turning it over to you with the agenda. Um, yeah. And we're, we're at a pretty exciting place in the school building. Yeah, it is unbelievably exciting. So let me first pull up the agenda and then we'll do my usual overview, kind of three, three month look ahead. You know, I think all the folks who are in the construction world know that the typical on a typical construction site, you do a one or two week look ahead with the contractor. Um, this, so this is what we're doing on a monthly basis is the three month look ahead, which gives you a little bit better perspective. So am I sharing? Can you guys see the agenda? Yes. Okay, so um, call to order. We're gonna, I'm gonna do the schedule overview. Uh, we're going to talk about the early site package and we're going to talk about the groundbreaking event that's coming up. Denisco is going to give us an update on permitting. Um, we're going to give a report on the really great process that we've just concluded with the Playground Equipment Working Group, give an update on the design subcommittee. There are uh, a couple of invoices to look at. So um, I'm going to take that down and I'm going to move on to the three, three month look ahead. And I'm going to highlight a couple of things. So, um, I mean, hopefully everybody's familiar with this now. Um, here's here's us. This is this group. So, and here's today's meeting. So, um, I've I've kept in here a couple of weeks past just to sort of comment on those items. But looking forward, <clears throat> our next meeting is April 26th, which is the Friday after school vacation week. Then we have a meeting in May, on May 17th. Um, off the calendar, but I want to highlight that both Kathy and I have a conflict with the current August meeting date. So we're going to bump that meeting to uh, August 16th, and you're going to see a change in your calendar as a result of that. So I just wanted to let you know why we're, we were doing that. So um, <clears throat> so on the, what's the consultant team been up to? So responded to MSBA comments. Um, we have been working, the team's been working on putting together the pre-qualification materials, which are going to be advertised shortly. And I want to also thank Simone for the huge, and Bob Parent for a huge amount of help they've given us with managing um, the procurement of a testing and inspections agency, which was just concluded and also for the, their input on the pre-qualification process. Um, in the meantime, the design team is working towards 
doing what's called the 90% set. So it's 90% construction documents, which are going to the cost estimators late April. And we're gonna have a cost estimate reconciliation on May 15th. And then we have a meeting with you um, that Friday. So the reconciliation is Wednesday, the meeting is Friday. So it will be short, but hopefully we'll be reporting that we are on budget. And then um, <clears throat> right at the end of May, we have to submit that 90% set to the MSBA. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna leave it to Ksenia and Rick and uh, Tim to talk about some more about the, um, <clears throat> the early site package. What I'm gonna focus on on this line is just talking about the fact that we, with the, with the contractor on site, we have now launched a series of communications that are going out to tell people about the pretty significant change in traffic on the site. So those notices started in the, in the superintendent's newsletter last week and are gonna continue for the next few weeks, but then we're sort of gonna layer on several other items. Um, from a, the public's, the broad public's perspective, I think one of the first times that many um, people on the school committee, school community are gonna become aware of this change is gonna be next Tuesday when um, the, the consultant team is giving an update to the school committee about the, about the project. And we will include an update about the schedule, the, the circulation change. At that point, we're gonna sort of amp up the issue because right now the change to the school traffic circulation is slated to occur on Monday, April 8th, which is, it's very intentional. The contractor will be ready to do it at that point. It's gonna take over the Southern half of the site. It's gonna <clears throat> result in you know significant changes. So I want you all um, to be aware of that. And if you have questions about it, we're gonna be posting materials on the website. Angela is gonna be sending materials out, the superintendent's newsletter, um, other venues. So um, that's that's gonna be a big event because it's going to make the, moment, the week or two after that. And we do have the scheduled a week before school vacation. So we're gonna do it for a week. We're gonna fine tune it. We're gonna come back the last week of April, hopefully with it sort of tuned up um, with any lessons learned. The last week of March on Tuesday, the 26th, and you should all have an invite from me in your calendar is the groundbreaking. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in the course of the project, but the groundbreaking is going to occur before this change in traffic circulation. Um, permitting, I'm gonna let um, Denisco talk about that. Construction meetings, um, we'll come back to that. And then design coordination, this is just a heads up that um, <clears throat> we had a very good building design subcommittee at the end of February. We had uh, the last of our playground working group meetings this week and Tim and Rick will talk about that. Um, again, Tuesday, this com coming up is the school committee meeting. In addition to getting an update because many, many members of the school committee are new they're also gonna be taking a vote on the proprietary items. And I think we're gonna talk about that a little bit later in the meeting. We have a building design subcommittee meeting probably the last or close to the last, and we're still trying to land um, the proposed, the, the next sustainability subcommittee. So, um, and then the MSBA is going to be at the groundbreaking. Um, but their next kind of task on our behalf, now that the, the um, revised funding agreement has been signed for the additional reimbursement, their next task for us is the review of the 90% documents at the end of May. So I'm gonna stop for a moment and just ask if there are any questions about all of that. Okay, I don't see any hands. I will say, we are coming to the end of what's been an incredibly complex period of multiple tasks interweaving. And with the permitting concluding and the construction underway and the construction documents, the design phase 
the design pieces related to construction documents coming to an end, it's gonna calm down. The schedule is gonna start to look very predictable, I believe. So um, I do just wanna ask Ksenia to just talk a little bit, um, just at a high level about the construction process that I think the first construction meeting was last week, just past week, right? This week, yep, yeah. that's right. Thank you, good morning. So the contractor, uh, Gaglio Ducci, uh, the early site uh, package contractor has mobilized on site and has started doing some preparatory work. There's a bit of irony in the fact that the work they're doing now is very small compared to the overall construction process, but it is by far the most intrusive piece of the work because what they're doing, even though they're only tasked with the early site package work with uh, site preparation, they are essentially establishing the new physical reality out on site, right? Creating the um, environment for the new traffic pattern for the uh, cars to, public cars to enter and leave through the North driveway only and establishing the construction fence around the site. It is this week, next week, maybe the third week out is probably the most activity that the school community is going to see sort of beyond that fence and changes. Once that settles down, most construction activity is going to continue inside the fence. They're going to have their own separate entrance on the south side, and it will stay that way for the most part throughout the rest of a project, even when we hire the main contractor to come and start raising the building inside that perimeter. So far, what Gagliarducci has done is, and, and, and as Margaret said, we started having our on-site uh, or a, um, in Emerson person construction meetings this week. Um, they've cleared um, some of the areas of trees where construction is going to need to happen. Um, they started work on widening the North driveway to add a third lane so that there could be one lane in, two lanes out with a dedicated lane for a left turn. Um, over, they started putting in some erosion controls around the far, far side of the field away from the school. And that's going to continue and move its way toward the school in the coming week. They are starting to bring on site their fencing and set it up again, starting far from the school and then moving closer. Uh, they've kept the playground operational this week, but today will be the last day, although I don't know how rainy it is out there today <laughs> um, and how it's getting used. But so start starting Monday, there's going to be a fence that goes um, uh, a little bit south of the school. Um, it'll leave the south parking lot. Um, operational because that is part of the current drop-off pickup scenario. That'll stay accessible until April 8th, which is when the traffic pattern changes over. Um, on site, you do now have every day that work is happening. Um, answer advisories, our clerk of the works, your clerk of the works, his name is Lee Figgins, and he is an extremely um, experienced individual, both with managing field construction, geotechnical, environmental issues. There is coordination happening with the Conservation to, uh, Commission to make sure that the work that's being done <clears throat> is fully compliant. As Margaret said, permitting, um, auto choir permitting um, uh, applications have been submitted and or completed. Um, in the next uh, week or so, uh, there's week, week and a half maybe, you're going to start seeing some more um, paving and curb reconfigurations in order to allow cars to turn around um, in order to in the parking lot in order to allow buses to drive up into what is currently the basketball court and set up their pattern driving around the back of the school as a busway. Um, again, th that's preparation for the April 8th change in circulation pattern. Um, 
there is one um, unexpected, well, unexpected, unexpected, you, you dig in the ground, you always expect something to find something. Um, there's a piece of enabling work that requires uh, modifying some underground drainage pipes. And one of the pipes that was uh, looked at, not touched yet, is found to be asbestos containing material. It is nothing alarming. It is not friable material. That means it doesn't um, when you break it, it doesn't turn into breathable dust or anything that leaches. It's stable. It's been underground, completely inaccessible to the public or the kids. Um, but we're following the correct procedure, uh, you know, in terms of permitting and removal of that. There is going to be a cost to the project, but it's well within the parameters of a project budget. Um, we've given them a not to exceed limit of $17,000 to move forward with that. Um, I'm going to pause and give Rick space here to fill in anything that I may have not touched on. Uh, thank you, Gesson. Yeah, no, uh, we work with Gaglia Ducci uh, before. Uh, they're a very competent and cooperative contractor. They're flexible. They, their superintendent seems to be a a good guy and somebody who can interface on the as needed with issues that might come up with the school being cheek and jowl next to what they're doing and this the the asbestos concrete pipe the only thing that's different about the handling of that is that they wrap it when it comes out of the ground and they put it in a different dumpster so it's not a uh it's not a real big deal. It's just a little different on handling and where it's got to go. Uh, and now that we found that here, well, we know where to look uh, for the main project, which will be taking more out of it, and we will design that in. So that's about all I've got to add. Rick, can I just ask you to speak to the reason for the tree removal? Because that I think it would be helpful for the folks on the committee to know why which trees were removed and why? Okay, the trees that were, there were trees that were removed that will be in the way of the uh, building, the new building, first and foremost. Th those are the, the ones that are on the driveway coming, in the south driveway coming in. Uh, there were trees removed at the north driveway because that is being widened uh to allow three wet lanes of traffic um uh, in and out both as a temporary basis and what will ultimately be the uh final condition of the school driveway when when the site is all completed and those trees up on the uh on southeast were reviewed during a tree commission uh hearing and were approved at that and one of them was a tree that the tree warden felt would be diseased and would come down in a couple of years anyway and then there were a, a half dozen trees east of the existing school between the school and the play fields that would come down for the softball fields and the and the play fields. They were right in the middle of the play fields for the final condition, but they were taken down now because there is a fear of them being a visual obstruction to bus drivers who will be coming down on the east side of the building with kids running between the building and the play field. So that's basically all the trees that came down were in the way of final construction and everything that remained uh, like the rest of the trees along the, the south entry driveway are trees that will stay uh, in the final condition. Um, I just want to pause just for a second to uh, say that Deb Leonard has joined us and Deb, just if you could unmute to say, so we can make sure we can hear you. I am here. Sorry, I'm late. That's okay. And I see Rupert has his hand up. Rupert. Uh, Rick, um, 
Oh, wait a minute. Rick, it's my understanding that the um, some of the some of the trees that came down are, are part of a plan to be uh, reincorporated into the building as oh. a playground. Is that true? Good, good, good point, Rupert. Yes, our landscape architect incorporated into the rain garden uh, sections of trunk, uh, both as round slabs and with some main limbs attached as features in the rain garden uh and the uh, forest floor areas uh that are out near the eastern uh, boundary of the site and those are put aside and will be incorporated in the final design by the uh, main project contractor thanks rupert I think that's all on the construction update that we have at the moment. Any questions on that or any part of it? Okay, we can move on. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the next item on the agenda was to talk about the early site package, which we've, we've covered quite a bit of. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the groundbreaking event. Kathy, do you want to describe what's going to what we're going to do, or would you like me to do that? Um, I I can describe it. So can Paul. Um, as it, we have a we have a, and then you can add to it, Margaret. Yep. Um, we have an agenda with a series of speakers, all of whom will speak quite quickly on you know, and hopefully fairly coordinated. Topics. Paul will be there to open it up. I'll give an overview about how exciting the project is with some our journey there and key elements. Doug will be speaking uh, about education and kids. Sarah Marshall, who is chair of the school building committee, will be there um, along with Doug. I I think we have um, well Lynn Griesmer, our council president, um, and uh, the plan, you know, as we're starting to talk about content, we want to give a big thanks to all the residents of Amherst who have supported the school and the construction sign gives that thanks to them. I believe we're going to be joined by Joe Comerford and Mindy Dom, Paul. Um, yes, that's who, true. And um, we'll have a representative come from MSBA. So that, that that's an agenda. And then there'll be a series of photo opportunities with various groups. So this includes Tammy, kids from the school, um, any anyone and everyone from the building committee is invited. And if you're there, we will recognize you. And there'll be uh, either pictures by the fence, pictures by the welcome sign. Um, the school committee uh, we'll be, we'll all know about this date. We're on, as Margaret said, we're on, she's on with proprietary items on March 19th and the school committee is all invited as well. So that, that's the agenda. And it really is a celebration of groundbreaking. So it's not a um, prolonged set of talks. Uh, I did, did I leave anything out, Margaret or Paul? No, that, that was perfect. Okay, I see Deb's hand is up. <clears throat> Yeah, um, so again, sorry I'm late. I just wondered if there was thought given to some of the uh, community members who are um, critical in getting the uh, override supported, um, Matt Holloway and Kirsten Hollibird and those folks. This, Deb, I've, I'm letting them all know about the date. Okay. And so the the effort that went into it um was very broad. Um yeah. so you know, so um I know several of the leadership people were asking about the date. So we'll be announcing it again on Monday night as a council meeting. Mm -hmm. So we'll be doing our best to let everyone know because it's a, a people are it's basically an invitation to come and celebrate. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're back. Oh, sorry. Um, so is this going to get pushed out to the PGOs? Uh, for the There's the superintendent's certainly newsletter, but the PGOs have their own newsletters. 
Um, yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we have, I, I should explain. So we have a subcommittee, Angela, who I think is on vacation today and not here, but Angela and myself and Tammy and Deb, Debbie Westmoreland, okay. who are gonna sort of coordinate. There, there's multiple, Tammy sort of rattled off a whole list of ways we have to push stuff out to the school community. Um, one thing I um, would like to circle back to um, if, the, if there aren't any other questions about the groundbreaking, um, I wanted to just ask, I, I'm not sure, in fact, I'm pretty, I'm, I am sure <laughs> that this committee hasn't seen the plan for the change to the traffic circulation, which has been closely coordinated with the school. So Rupert, for Rupert and Tammy and Doug and Bob Parent, um, this is very familiar. But I think it would be good before we move on to the other items, just to ex can Rick or Tim, could you show the plan and just quickly walk the committee through what this change is going to look like? And I apologize, I should have asked you. Yeah, should it's going to take me a minute to pull it up, but uh, okay. So while you're doing that, I mean, in in a nutshell, um, in order to allow the contractor to operate safely and at the scale they need to on the southern half of the site, starting on April 8th, the only entrance into the site from the south is gonna be for construction vehicles. And all the traffic going to and from the school is gonna go out of the north entrance. So I think everybody already is aware that the traffic along Southeast Street is, um, you know, is challenging at the times that of school drop off and pick up. But um, yeah, Tim's gonna sort of explain this plan that's been developed to allow traffic, the <clears throat> drop off and pick up to happen on the um, on the north north end of the site only. And Tim, um, I've got it up on the screen so we could just talk about it. Thank you for looking for it. Tim, do you want to talk through it or do you want me to? Sure. So all traffic is going to move to the north entrance uh, with a widened, uh, what was uh, the exit for the entire site. So one lane will come in and two will go out. And so as traffic comes in, um, as you get to the north end of the parking lot, car, parent, staff traffic will turn south going through the parking lot. Staff will park and people dropping off uh, will queue in the parking lot and with the help of staff uh, drop off in front of the building where the buses park now in the existing drop off and uh, pick up configuration. Uh, as that turn was made from the parking area, you'll notice there's an area for vans that will be taken out of the loop. Um, and then that's how the parent and car circulation will work. Um, going back to the north end of the site where cars turned right coming in, buses will turn left. They will stop at the playground north of the building, and that's where students will be discharged and get off the bus. Um, and then the buses will continue to circle around to the east of the building where some of those trees were removed to improve visibility and safety. And then they will circle around the south of the building and rejoin the loop and exit uh, passing the building and exiting at the north entrance to the site. The vans that we talked about when we came to the south will take the same route as the bus, but they will have that pull off area so that they are separated uh, by Jersey barriers uh, for a safe drop off condition uh, separated from traffic in all directions. Uh, as part of this circulation, there's a little bit of work that has been mentioned, the widening of the entrance, um, tree removal, um, increasing the radius at some of the turns, um, a cut through the existing median of the parking lot, and repaving uh, the back driveway that uh, goes behind the building. Once this is in place, uh, no school traffic will be using the southern entrance to the site. That will be construction vehicles only and be blocked off. Margaret, you're muted. So any questions about that before we take it down? 
we'll be talking about this again on um, at the school committee meeting to start the outreach about it. I see Jonathan's hand is up and Deb's. Jonathan? Uh, at pickup, I assume this would be very similar, but just just to ask you to walk through uh, if there's any difference in, in how things would circulate at pickup time. The circulation pattern are the same for pickup and drop off. Uh, queuing will happen in uh, the southern facing drive lane. Um, so it will have to be essentially uh, the pattern is the same and staff parking will happen after discharge so that there isn't the conflict between queuing cars and uh, parked cars exiting, leaving and pulling into the traffic lane. And then I should also note, which I didn't, uh, I was walking through, um, this obviously does reduce the total parking count from the existing configuration. So there are going to be some additional uh, spots striped at the end. And then those will be access control too, because obviously those cars will not be uh, allowed to leave while there are buses parked there and children um, going to and from them. Okay, Deb? Um, two questions. For students who walk or um, come to school on bicycles, how does that fit into this flow? pattern because it looks to me like they're going to have to cross where the buses are peeling off up there yeah that is true uh, they will have to cross where the buses turn um and we do expect that as there is now there will be staff out there to uh, maintain control and uh, ensure safety okay and, and bikers as well indeed yes and then it, it, traffic management at the southeast intersection there is there is it just going to be the way it is now so um what we're going to do deb actually Cassandra, can you take this down for a minute we're gonna um for the couple of weeks ahead of the um the change and you know through the process until it settles down. We're going to use electronic signage. Um, just trying to get the right drawing here. We use electronic signage from all the the various directions to sort of show people what this is going to look like. <clears throat> to, you know, to caution them that there's going to be um, a change. Hang on one second. Here we go. <clears throat> Can everybody see this? I'll try to make it a little bigger, but you know, here's the so the issue, as everybody knows, is that <clears throat> this this part of um the the road system is is very busy now when there are when the school is going through drop off and pickup, but we're gonna deploy six signs yeah. starting um in just a week or two that are gonna tell people about the traffic change, that are gonna point them to the website to indicate that there's, um, to, to make, let's show people know and use public communications to get the word out. So um, I I think you, this commit, the committee members here can really help by um, offering us any other sort of avenues that we can use. Um, so I, I'm happy to send around, we do have a communications plan that sort of lists what's happening each week to sort of start to get the word out. But um, yeah, this this will be a big change and it will take a while for tra local traffic to adjust around it. But I think what we can do is tell people early and often. And um, I, I do believe it's the issue is going to be <laughs> for you know an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon and those times are already challenging on this particular this particular part of the city circulation system so it follow up Doug, oh. Doug has his hand up also if, I think I might be able to clarify a question that, that she was asking sorry they're doing announcements here so you may hear some background noise from me but but um so I think Deb was asking specifically at the southern end where the turn happens, there'll be a stop sign there. So in inside the campus, when they come and they go to the southern end where the new cut through is, yeah. 
there'll be a stop sign there. There'll also be staff there to direct and control as people go to, to do drop off or pick up in that area. Does that answer your question, Deb? Not really. No, I mean that left. So the left turn from Southeast onto Main Street gets backed up as it is. And I've always wanted there to be like a staggered green in each direction going north and going south. I don't know if that's possible, but um, between the buses turning and uh, I mean, the PVTA buses turning south on Southeast Street and uh -huh. people and students going to the university and turning left there. Um, uh -huh. That's that. That's my concern. It's bad enough. Yeah. Well, I will say that we did um, when we started the discussion a, quite a long time ago with Guilford um, from the DPW. One of the things we found is that that particular traffic signal is an older signal that is not. It's not easy to program for the kind. And if you had a new traffic signal there, you'd have more choices for programming. And we don't with that sign. So we've got to sort of create a protective sort of area around and just and tell people. Okay. Rupert, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to. Um, wait a minute. There, I just wanted to tell folks. Um, uh, that are concerned about that double line of cars queuing up for afternoon pickup on the west side of the parking lot. Um, folks who aren't familiar, that mirrors or, or replicates an existing system that uh, uh, Tammy and the folks at Fort River have uh, figured out how to manage very effectively. Uh, right now, the double line of cars is in the south parking lot instead of the west parking lot, but it's the same kind of activity, the same kind of procedure. And I think the parents uh, we'll find it uh, similar enough that it will not be that hard uh, to adjust where the queue is and how to take turns to to pull forward to pick up kids. So I think it'll work really well. Yeah, and I, I also just want to thank Doug and Tammy um, and Rupert again, because this was developed, Nisco developed this approach with a lot of input from them. Doug? The one other thing I'll mention for, for Deb is just on, on street, um, the police will also be there to help direct traffic, especially in the early days, as 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 uh, to manage people coming in and out. Um, so I think that's another factor, and and how and how long we'll need to have that kind of support. We'll you know we'll live with the circumstances and see what we need. But but the, you know at that sort of pull out and and the complications of those intersections, there's going to be a, a, a an officer there to help direct. That does resolve my question. Thank you. Great. Okay. Well, again. <laughs> You heard it here first, um, but I think it, there's a lot of work that's gone into it, which isn't to say it's perfect. We're gonna have to fine tune it after we try it out for a few days, but thank you to everybody in this group who's contributed to the solution and the rollout. So um, more to come on that. So I wanna, I think- Margaret, wait, Paul, Paul's hand oh, is up. Paul has hand. Yes, can I just say, add one thing. I think the emphasis that we as committee and others need to say is that, the traffic is going to be difficult. There's a lot of construction going to be happening during this entire time. There's a lot of truck traffic. People, if they're not going to Fort River School, should avoid this area and seek alternate routes if at all possible, because it's just going, it's going to be, you know, especially during school and during rush hours, um, it's going to be difficult. So uh, there's construction on College Street. There's other construction projects as well. So I think to our friends and neighbors and, you know, people we talk with, try to avoid the the area. I mean, one of the things that I like about this approach is that it is setting us up for the ultimate change that is coming with the new building, which is that we are separating. It's the beginning of the separation of buses and cars from, you know, north and south. So it's it's sort of a, a first step on the way to that final condition. Jonathan has his hand up. This is, uh, and you may already have this on your radar, but... Um... UMass, so this is going to be kind of a, a two-ended thing. UMass will have their pickup day um, for students and their their drop-off day in September for students. I think sometimes that lands on a Friday in addition to the weekend. And just mm -hmm. at, at some point, someone should, if they haven't already, just kind of check in with UMass because they, they like to redirect traffic as part of what they do. And some of that comes down Route 9. Um, okay. So we will, those, those we will check events. on that. Okay. And Deb, did you have 
Deb's hand went up again, Margaret. Sorry. So yeah, I'm also telling UMass students in whatever way possible, because that's a route to campus as well as a route home to um, the Pike. Yeah. All righty. So I think we're going to move to the next item on the agenda, which is an update on permitting and um, sort of an, up, an update also on the Corkeen surfacing and the waiver of liability that um, Danisco described at our last meeting. So uh, Donna, Tim, Rick, do you want to start with that? I can give an update on permitting. Um, so essentially all of our hearings are complete. Uh, we have not seen, but we know that there's a draft uh, set of conditions on the planning board. Um, You'll recall that we've met with the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals, Conservation Commission, uh, uh, Design Review Board. Those meetings are now complete. Uh, there is supplemental information that we will have to provide to them. For example, when the Corkeen decision is finalized, we will have to uh, file that with the Conservation Commission. Uh, when we have the final design for the signage, that will have to go for the Design Review Board. Uh, but essentially, that process is complete, and we have all of the conditions and approvals that we need at this point. We do have a meeting with Rob Moore next week to talk about building permitting and the specifics of that, and there are some additional meetings that we need to schedule with the fire department and such just to review all the details. But in essence, we are at the point where most of the work of the permitting process is complete, and we are in good standing with all of the course that we have been with. Um, I don't know, Rick, if you want to talk about the uh, working issue. Uh, no, we're in the process of filing, believe it or not, a demo permit for taking down the outdoor toilet building and uh, a uh, building permit for the early site package because the building will ultimately sit on the dirt. Uh, but those are in process and we'll be submitting them next week. And then um, subsequent to, I can refer the subsequent to the last meeting, Denisco, Donna did provide as the leader of the firm, a draft waiver of liability for the town to review. Paul, do you have any comment about that? I know it's under review. Yeah, so the town her attorney, I just checked in, they haven't returned, they haven't gotten back to us as whether they advised us to sign that or not. Okay. So I think that's everything we have to report on that, but we can turn to an update on the playground equipment working group, um, which wrapped up its last meeting yesterday. It was a great process. So Tim, do you wanna sort of show everybody where we landed? Sure. Sure. So after a series of uh, very productive meetings with the playground working group, um, we arrived at a design uh, that we feel incorporates uh, a lot of the concerns of the members of the group, uh, that there was a range of uh, activities that uh, were appropriate for all of the ages that would be using it from K through five. Um, there was an appropriate mix of uh, equipment that is fully accessible and challenging for all individuals. Um, and then we were able to incorporate a lot of the specifically requested items. Um, uh, a lot of swings. Uh, you can see in the foreground of this picture, there are what are called oodle swings uh, that allow multiple uh, kids to sit on. And then there are a lot of um, devices that provide uh, sensory input. There's a roller table. Actually, I'm gonna take this down and show you something that might be a little bit more illustrative. Um, so, uh, we have just a little bit of a... As you go through the pieces, Tim, I know one of the things Tammy had mentioned is the Gaga pit and there is there is one <laughs> so there is <laughs> sorry, it's, sorry it's taking so long and for it i to had open, to even look up what pit. is a Gaga pit but, but 
<laughs> so here we got this one. See this a little bit better. So starting with the oodle swings uh, that multiple kid, kids can sit on, there is a roller table right here, which is actually uh, a series of rollers that you can pull yourself through this tube and uh, feel the um, rollers on your back. Uh, there is a fully accessible um, we go round that you can uh, be in and uh, by turning the handle on the side the entire structure rotates. Um, uh, there was a lot of discussion about the momentum of play in the working group. Kids tend to like to travel in closed loops, and there are multiple closed loops that are accessible and otherwise within the playground. So you can go up the ramps and come down. You can go up the ramps and veer off onto other overhead climbing structures and bridges. Uh, same as you get over here. There are interesting rope climbing, multiple types of slides, musical play elements to the north of the playground and then uh, a series of swings. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, one of the other considerations that was widely talked about in the group was shade to make sure that that was there. And we've even moved some site planting to the southern edge of the playground so that as those trees grow, they will cover even more of the playground with shade throughout the day. But in this video, you can see the relationship of the playground uh, just north of the cafeteria um, and then there is some hardscaped area in between the soft surface playground and the building that will be painted with games. And then to the west, to the left of this view here are the basketball courts. And to the right, north of the playground are the athletic fields, which will also be available for um, students during recess and gym. Uh, but, uh, you know, after uh, a series of meetings and a very productive process, we are at a playground design that meets the budget. Um, and the only decision left is uh, how exactly it will be procured. Um, it is going before the school committee as a priority vote, so we get exactly what is designed. Um, uh, another way would be to go to the state business, but that decision is yet to be made. Uh, Deb, uh, just to be sure, the overhead climbing structure is what I would call monkey bars. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm yep, sorry. You know, I I um, listened in on the uh, a couple of the meetings and the final one. Uh, first of all, Doug, Tammy, you the staff you have, you know this already, but they're fabulous, and they came and you know they were intensely involved from the gym, the special needs kids and everything else on talking about the way this would work. And one person um, at the end, when they were seeing this, she was thanking the design team um, for being so responsive and moving things around and thinking of the equipment. And her summary was, we're creating a magical play playground for kids or playland for children, um, you know, on a, just the excitement of some of these um, quite different than many have seen. And it, as Tim just mentioned, this, this running up a ramp, going over somewhere and coming down somewhere else, there's, there's a pattern where you can be constantly moving and you can be moving with other children, you know, there's room for two people doing it at the same time. So it, it's a, uh, it's an exciting, it's an exciting development that just started with pieces of equipment. Um, yeah, it's been a great process. So, and it's and done. The, the slides that Tim has just sh shown, um, he, I think he sent me a set either yesterday or this morning, but I'll make sure that we post them in the packet for today. So if anyone wants to go back and sh show this to others, uh, you, you'll be able to show it as part of the, um, so it'll be today's meeting packet um, for, for the playground equipment. All right, thanks, Tim. So, but back to you. <laughs> the next item was an update on the our last design subcommittee meeting. Uh, 
Uh, but, uh, some background noise here. I'm trying to <laughs> mute it. So we have a we did a meet uh, last time, uh, basically confirming uh, some color palettes. I don't have uh, stuff to share because we have the subsequent uh, design uh, building committee meeting on the 26th uh, day of the groundbreaking. And at that meeting, uh, we were presenting a lot more, some finalized exterior uh, patterns and materials, uh, and then the full development of interior floor patterns, uh, color palettes uh, that we have been discussing with the group. Um, yeah, and I want to add, um, there was a good conversation at the end of the playground working group about how the colors of the playground equipment will be coordinated with accent colors on the building. And I think it's actually going to be a really nice feature of that is going to pull the whole thing together from a color perspective. So, The, the other thing we might want to do, Tim, just in terms of pictures as the community starts to say, okay, this is real, is there's a whole layout of site design with some trails, rain gardens, you know, a path around the, the school. So just, uh, I know you've sent us some of those pictures, but I, I'll, I want to be able to show some of it. So just if, as long as we have them in the packet that, that, as you said, there's basketball courts, there's trails there. It's a, it's a site that, um, the kids during the day can be out and about, but also the town and the community is is getting uh, an asset that's quite exciting. Mm -hmm. We'll make sure okay. to include that in the packet. So, um, last meeting, I think everybody saw the list of proprietary items. And they're in the meeting minutes if you want to refer back to them. That we're going to be going, you know, as we said on Tuesday to the school committee. Um, we're going to include Corkeen as a possible proprietary item for their vote. And, uh, you know, as a reminder, as Rick pointed out last week, the reason that the school committee decision is because they are an elected body and this group is an appointed body, just so nobody feels snubbed by the school committee being the ones that sign off on this. Um, that is the reason, that's the logic of it. Um, so we've actually, it's only 9.30 and we've gotten through the content of the meeting. The next item would be invoices and then public comments. So Ksenia, can I turn it over to you to do invoices? Certainly. We are very speedy today. Here we go. Okay. Uh, can everybody see that? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so we have seven invoices on tap. This is the February package of invoices so for February services being presented for payment in March. <clears throat> it totals just shy of $400,000 with the bulk of that being for design efforts. Um, which are continuing. So we focused a lot of today's conversation on the construction work that's kicked off, but of course the design team is still vigorously engaged in finalizing the 90% um, construction documents for the building. Um, and that's what's happening here. Uh, the owner's project manager team, our team is also somewhat ramping up efforts now that we've got on-site presence uh, overseeing construction. Um, so answer advisories invoices, $47,000. $1,554.19, which is a 2% progression uh, and brings us to 20% build of our contract, which does include construction fee services through the end of a project. Uh, the design team, Danisco, has a set of five invoices, a total $344,788, which is a 5% progression of their contract, bringing them to 54%. Again, their balance of the contract does include construction phase services as well. So they're far more, far further along than 54% in terms of building design, 
<clears throat> a business leaving space for oversight of construction. And there is an invoice for a, a consultant called uh, Precise or Perse, depending on who you ask. Um, they are the folks that did a butter outreach and sent some letters to the um, owners of our budding properties. Um, they're at only about 51% build. And at the moment, we think we may not need more from them. We shall see. Um, I will briefly, before I move off this page, any questions here before I just briefly flip through each page of each invoice? Nope. Um, this is the answer invoice, which includes staff time and um, um, architect's consulting services. This is the sustainability consultant with many pages of daily notes from each person who worked on the project. Um, this is the Denisco invoice, the bigger one. And then some of the smaller reimbursables with backup. Again, do stop me if anything piques your particular interest. And this is the precise invoice for a better outreach. I'll leave it on this page for a second. Um, for any questions, we all of these invoices have been reviewed by our team, negotiated, revised when necessary, which none was necessary in this round. Um, we certified uh these are okay to pay and <clears throat> um sound staff has had the opportunity to see them as well i'll stop sharing so um i make a motion that we approve the invoices as presented second seconded by doug um if there are no other questions we'll move to a vote uh, Doug? Yes. Kathy's a yes. Um, Jennifer? Yes. Paul? Yes. Rupert? That's a big uh-huh. <laughs> Deb? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Simone? Yes. That's unanimous, Margaret, with... Um, Three absent. Three absent. So I, you know, people, um, as as we, just before I open it for public comments, um, Ma when Margaret did the schedule, she'll post that schedule again in, in the packet or send it around so people are reminded. But that change on the August date, I believe you put holds on all our calendars. So just to change that, I did. And, there is a tentative date for the sustainability committee and that we're still waiting for some plug load analysis on budgeting. And one of the things that Margaret is doing behind the scenes is we talked about um, uh, not necessarily artwork, but it would be exciting visuals, um, some kind of a display panel in the school that would be wired um, to show the solar, the solar energy generated by the, by the solar panels or the energy used by it, and that there's been some exploration of is anything like out there like that in an elementary school? You know that this would be a visual that the kids could look at, and there's different places in, that it could potentially be um, put. It would be as I understand it, these are wired to the system. So it requires some decisions. And it's not that we've identified anything yet, but they're they've identified some places that have them and they're at a grade school level. So they're they're colorful um and uh change daily uh, to, to to see what we've got because to make the building itself uh, part of the artwork of the building. Um, so th that's just a report on that's going on behind the scenes um, 
with no nothing specific yet, but a, a search for is there something that is already ready to go on some level and is exciting. And before we did that, we would bring it would be brought both to the sustainability committee, but to this committee. It would be part of the design of the building. Margaret, is that a, a yeah. good way? Yeah, no, that's a good representation. Um, Shelley uh, Potter and Jacob Raskin together with Kathy have been looking for examples to bring together and um, that would allow um, them to bring back uh, some options for what that would look like. And it's important to do this now because whatever we need in the way of data, power, monitoring in order to provide a display needs to be folded into the construction documents. So. And there, there is a, and Paul is well aware of this. There's, we do have a percent for art bylaw that potentially um, allocates a budget and sets up a process for that. That has not happened yet in terms of the process. So that is a um, waiting to be seen. Danisco in their designs have indicated some places where artwork could go um, and be vis visible. Um, and if there's nothing there, it'll be a nice wall. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I'm looking for any other comments before I open it up for public comments. Uh, I don't see any. So we are now open for public comments. And I see one. I'm bringing you in to allow you to talk. Thanks. Can you hear me, Kathy? Yes. Yep. Uh, hi, Rudy Perkins from Amherst. Um, having been involved with a few groundbreakings when in my housing project work, uh, we always tried to get anyone who was a representative of the major funders involved. And I know you've uh, we've gotten a lot of help from the state, and I'm, I think it's so great that we're going to have Senator Comerford and Representative Dome. Come, but I'm wondering if I didn't hear mention of Representative McGovern's office at the federal level, since the IRA is going to be a big part of our uh, energy funding, uh, it, we're hoping, hoping, and also maybe Eversource. Um, I, maybe you mentioned them and I didn't make note of it, but I think it might be a courtesy at least to to see if they want to make a brief word. Um so uh, thanks, thanks for that. I'm really excited to come to the groundbreaking. And I, I hope, Paul or Kathy, you can mention the net zero aspects of this building and how this is our first foray into a building built under our net zero bylaw and the town's important contribution as a town to uh, you know the climate uh, mitigation. So um, I'm sure you would, but I just wanted to underscore that. And the other aspect of the school that I think is important to some constituencies here is the community playing field uh, rehab and upgrade. And so I realize that's a minor thing compared to the whole school, but um, it might be good to just underscore that that work is also being done and we'll have that to look forward to as a community asset. So thanks so much for all the work you guys have been doing. It's awesome. Thanks, Rudy. Let me just see. I don't see other other hands. Um, Tim, if you have it handy, I can pull it up. The um, we we actually have a construction site sign that's pretty exciting. Um, um, and if you don't have it, I'll just send it to everyone. But uh, it reminded me that the the sign explicitly says this is a net zero school. And absolutely, we will be featuring that in the opening comments, as well as the fact that this is a community resource with fields. Here, Here's the sign. Um, and so it is it is highlighted um, with uh, with bicycles, which is what I really like that we put bicycles on the play lot. So that is, um, that's going to go up at some point by the construction site. I'm not seeing any other hands up. 
um, we we we've been encouraged by our town attorney to have a motion to adjourn and a vote on the adjourn. So I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. Second. And I will now put it to a vote. Um, Doug. Yes. Kathy is a yes. Uh, Jennifer. Yes. Paul. Yes. Deb Leonard. Yes. Jonathan. Yes. Tammy. Yes. Rupert. I will succinctly and as briefly as possible say yes. <laughs> Simone. Yes. And so we we are adjourned at 940. And uh, I encourage you, since we won't meet again until after the opening uh, groundbreaking, I encourage everyone to come. This is a moment to celebrate together and actually see each other other than just the heads on the screen. So we are adjourned for today. Thank you very much.